So like I'd said before, we have finished all of the new stuff with trig. It's now just going to be recapping some of the things to do with the double angle formulae. And then it's going to be doing some things to do with modeling, which pulls together absolutely everything that we've done. OK, so you may remember me saying when we did the harmonic identities, we've stepped away from the double angle formulae for a bit. And then we're coming back to them now and doing some proving of identities. I don't know why the textbook does it in that order, but I really like it. I like studying something, studying something else and then coming back to it. It feels uh, it's a good way for your brain to learn these new things. So I've put the double angle formula up here as a reminder. But these are things that you should be remembering already. There's three of them for cos 2x, and there's just the individual ones that you have for sine 2x and tan 2x here. So the first thing that we're going to try and do here is it wants us to prove that tan 2 theta is equal to this thing that we've got. And this is actually going to be a really easy one to do. So we know that tan 2 theta from our double angle formulae is just 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. How does that look similar to the thing that they want us to prove? What's the differences between them? There's a 1 instead of a cot. There's a 1 instead of a cot. What else? Two tan theta two. And there's a 2 tan theta instead of a 2. And no there's no tan squared. So what do you think I could do? Pardon? If I divide everything by tan, I will create those three different things that I've spotted as a difference. Two tan theta would become tan, one would become cot, because you're dividing by tan, and tan squared would become tan when you divide by tan. So all I'm going to do is divide the top by tan theta, and I'm going to divide the bottom by tan theta. As long as I'm doing it to the top and the bottom, it's going to keep it fair. So I just get two over cot theta minus tan theta. That's as simple as the proof would be for that kind of thing. And then we're going to do a proof that 1 minus cos 2 theta over sine 2 theta is equal to tan theta. Now, I think it's going to be a lot easier to work on the left-hand side, because the left-hand side is the one that's like messier or could do with some work on it. So I'm going to try and make 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by sine 2 theta. I'm going to try and make it equal tan theta. What's the biggest difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side? Uh, one of the differences is a fraction. There's, that's not, in my opinion, that's not the biggest difference. Uh, that one has cos and sine. The argument is the biggest difference, OK? The argument is the thing that I want you to train your brain to say, that's the biggest issue here. The left-hand side has got two thetas. The right-hand side has just got theta. And we need to make the argument become theta. So the way we do that is we're going to use the double angle formulae in a sensible way that will hopefully give us tan theta instead. Now, out of the options that I have here for cos 2x or cos 2 theta, which of them is going to be the most useful one and why? The sine. The sine one. Yeah, I agree. Why is the sine one going to be the best? Um, if you're trying to get tan, you want to get sine over something. Yeah, I guess you want to get sine over something. That's one of the ways you could think about it. I think, I think perhaps it's also because the ones want to cancel out. Because you would do oh, one yeah. minus, and then the one would cancel it. So I'm going to replace cos 2 theta with this one here. 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And sine 2 theta, we know, is 2 sine theta cos theta. Again, that's just up here. Expanding the brackets on the top, 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared theta divided by 2 sine theta cos theta. So the 1s cancel. The twos cancel, so you just get sine squared theta divided by sine theta cos theta. Anything else cancels? Sine yeah, the sine squared and the sine theta, so I can get rid of this sine theta and the squared. So I just have sine theta over cos theta, which is tan theta.
So we get to the dominant equivalent. No. No, this is, I have a sheet for you that I'm going to give you when we get to the end of this topic that has all of the things I want you to memorize. And when I say I want you to memorize them, it's not for my sake, it's for your sake. I've explained before why I think it's important that you have these memorized. So again, it, it looked hard, but all you needed to do is be like, okay, well, I don't want two theta here. I want it to just be with theta. So I'm going to start using the double angle formula and I'm going to see what happens next. We haven't done these for a while. We stepped away doing all the harmonic stuff. And now we're back to come to these kinds of questions. So we will push on. We'll do the last two examples, and then you can try some of the other ones at home, and then we'll do some more of them in class as well. Okay? So here we've got cot 2x plus cosec 2x is going to be the same as cot x. So the main issue is that the left-hand side has an argument of 2x and the right-hand side has an argument of x. So we need to work on the left-hand side. And so cot 2x plus cosec 2x, we're going to start writing them in terms of, the, yeah, 1 over stuff. So cot is going to be cos 2x over sine 2x. And cosec 2x is 1 over sine 2x. So we have here cos 2x plus 1 over sine 2x, because they've got a common denominator, so I can just add them. So first of all, I dealt with them as being cot and cosec by writing them as cos and sine. Now I'm going to deal with the arguments. The denominator is nice and easy to deal with. The denominator is just going to be 2 sine x cos x. But what do you think I should choose for my cos 2x to be uh, for the numerator out of the three that I've got? You might want to look back onto this page. Think about which of those three you would choose. I'm going to use two cos squared x plus Good. You would choose the 2 cos squared x minus 1 for cos 2x because you'd have a plus 1 afterwards, and the plus 1 and the minus 1 will cancel out with each other. So that the 2s will also cancel because plus 1 and minus 1 will cancel and the twos will cancel, so that you have cos squared x over sine x cos x. And again, you can see that the cos, you can divide the top and bottom, so you get cos x over sine x, which is cot x. So it's really similar to the previous one, apart from we're using the reciprocal trig functions for this. OK, so this one now says, by writing cos x as cos of 2 times x over 2, obviously these two things are the same as each other because 2 times x over 2 is just x, prove this identity. So this one's a bit harder to spot, but if you look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we don't have matching arguments. We have x over 2 and we have x. The reason it's saying to write this in this form is because normally we have that cos of 2x is equal to cos squared x minus sine squared x or 2 cos squared x minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared x. But we're instead going to think about it as 2 times x over 2. So all of our formulae are going to be the same but with x over 2 in the place. And the reason that's going to be useful is because then we can make it look like this x over 2 that we've got here. So I might just rewrite these because I've made a little bit of a mess of those. So we can now say that cos of 2, this thing, would be either, and we know it's going to be either 2 cos squared x over 2 minus 1 or 2 sine squared x over 2 minus 1. The angle is halved, like it always does with that formula. And we're just going to work through this really carefully. So 1 minus cos x and 1 plus cos x. Which of the cos x options should we do for the numerator? Oh, I've written this wrong. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No one stopped me when I wrote it wrong. <laughs> 
So which of those do you think we should use for the numerator? Uh, the cos version wouldn't cancel out the one because you're subtracting it. You want to use the sine version because you will then have 1 minus 1 minus 2 sine squared x over 2. And then the other one, you can do the opposite, 1 plus 2 cos squared x over 2 minus 1. The reason we selected those ones is to get the ones cancelling out all over the place. So if I expand the brackets on the top, you get 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared x over 2. And in the denominator, 1 plus 2 cos squared x over 2 minus 1. And so what you see happening here, the 1 and the minus 1 cancel, the 1 and the minus 1 cancel, and you get left with 2 sine squared x over 2 over 2 cos squared x over 2. Anything else can happen here? The 2's cancel, and you've got sine squared over cos squared, which is tan squared x over 2. So this one is exactly the same as the previous ones, where the argument on the left-hand side is double the argument on the right-hand side. The argument on the left-hand side is double the argument on the right-hand side. It just looks unfamiliar having to do these half bits for the angle, but it's the same kind of pattern. So what I'm going to ask you to have an... Yeah? Why do you change this symbol for the numerator? Um, you did 1 minus 1 minus 2 sine squared x over 2. Yep. And then you did 1 minus 1, but then you changed... Oh, because when I have a negative outside this bracket here, it's a negative multiplied by 1, which is negative 1, and it's a negative multiplied by negative 2, which is plus 2, because a negative times a negative is a positive. People often can make those kind of mistakes. They just subtract the first one and then leave the, the next one without thinking about changing it. So in the next exercise, I'll come back to this slide in just a second. The first question, there are eight questions to try. I'm going to ask that we try these eight questions for homework. And I don't care if you try them and you can only do one or two of them because we will spend the next part of, less of the lesson when we come back trying the ones we couldn't do and then trying new ones. But it's important to have a go at doing these. And just to tell you, I want all of them, I think it's usually going to be best to work on the left-hand side for these ones that you've got here. I think the left-hand side is going to be working on most of them, but I'm not sure 100%. They look tricky. They're just going to have to be like diving in and having a go at some of these ones. It's question one from that next exercise that we've got. And we're going to finish up a little bit early today because I think we've had a really, really heavy lesson. Okay? Is this the only part we have left? Yeah, and then the only part we've got left afterwards is modelling with trig.